let's talk about linear equations. So one of the first things that I always notice whenever I'm dealing with linear equations is students have a hard time realizing the difference between an equation and an expression. So the main difference between these two is an equation has an equal sign and an expression doesn't. So whenever I'm dealing with equations, I should expect equal signs in the problems. And I want to find a number that makes both sides of this equation, both the left and the right hand of the equal sign, true. And these are called solutions. So let's look at solutions for a little bit. Let's consider this equation 5x minus 3 equal to 2x plus 6. And my first question is, is x equal to 3 a solution? Well, in order to figure that out, we need to actually change all of the x's to 3's. So instead of 5x minus 3, I have 5 times 3 minus 3. Instead of 2x plus 6, I have 2 times 3 plus 6. And now we can start simplifying. The left-hand side of this equation becomes 15 minus 3. The right is 6 plus 6. And then we add and subtract. And we get 12 equal to 12, which tells us, yes, x equal to 3 is a solution since we know that 12 is equal to 12. Let's look at another one. So we have the same equation, but this time I want to know if x equal to negative 2 is a solution. So I'm going to change the x's to negative 2. So I have 5 times negative 2 minus 3 on the left, and on the right, 2 times negative 2 plus 6. As I start simplifying, I get negative 2 minus 3 on the left and negative 4 plus 6 on the right, which then gives me negative 13 plus 2, which is not true. Negative 13 is not equal to 2. So in this case, no, x equal to negative 2 is not a solution. So now that we've looked at how solutions work, and we know how to determine if a number is a solution, but the question is how do we just find the solution? We don't want to check every single number until we get something that works. And for now, we're going to be concerned with linear equations. Linear equations are anything that can be written in the form ax plus b equal to 0. A and B are going to be any real numbers, and A just can't be equal to zero. So most of the time, linear equations are not going to look exactly like this, but the key is they could be in this form. So let's look at some examples of things that are linear as well as some things that are not linear. Here's the first thing that we have that is linear, 4x equal to 2 thirds x plus 1. So this is an example of a linear equation x plus 7 equal to x over 4. That's another example of a linear equation. 3x plus 7 equal to negative 2 is another example of a linear. So now let's look at things that are not linear. x squared plus 7x equal to 2 is not linear, in particular because of that x squared term. The x squared term makes it no longer linear. Another example, square root of x plus 5x equal to 12. The square root of x makes this not linear. We can't have a square root of x. Finally, 2 over x minus 3x equal to 4. We can't have x on the bottom of a fraction. As we can see from my second linear example, you can have x on the top, but just not on the bottom. So let's look at how to solve these. When solving linear equations, there are really two main rules. The first rule is that we can add or subtract the same number from both sides of the equation. So we can add the same number to the both sides of the equal sign or subtract the same number from both sides. The other rule is that we can multiply or divide by the same non-zero number on both sides. So we can't multiply and divide by zero, but any other number we can do as long as we do it to both sides. Now that we've looked at the rules for the things that we're allowed to do, let's actually walk through the steps in solving a linear equation. Step one is to simplify this e the equation, and there can be a couple of different things that we do in order to properly simplify. One of the things we can do is to clear parentheses. If we have parentheses on either side of the equation, we can use our properties to actually get rid of those parentheses. We can combine like terms on the same side of the equation. So if I have things on the same side of the equation that can be combined, we can go ahead and combine those. As an example, if I have 2 minus x plus 3, I can go ahead and add the 2 and the 3. Another way to simplify is to multiply both sides by the least common denominator to clear any fractions. So if you have fractions, this can be a good way to get rid of them. So you can do 
any of these that are relevant to the problem, or it may be that the equation is already simplified and we can skip this first step and move to the second one. Step one is to collect all the terms with the variable on one side. So if you have an x on both the left and the right side of the equation, you try to get both of them on one side by adding or subtracting. So we want to get all of the terms with the variable together on one side of the equation. We then collect all the constant terms on the other side. Anything without the variable gets moved to the other side and we combine all of those. Finally, we divide by the coefficient of the variable. So whichever number is actually in front of the variable, we divide through by that. 